The ending of WrestleMania 39 absolutely shattered my heart into a million pieces. Cody Rhodes was unsuccessful in dethroning Roman Reigns for the undisputed WWE Championship. I really thought he was going to go all Super Cena and kick out after the Samoan Spike and the Spear, but that clearly wasn't the case. Cody Rhodes tasted defeat for the first time since returning to WWE last year, and it broke my heart. I'm not even kidding, it was a devastating loss that withdrew all the adrenaline in my soul. More importantly than that, it made me legitimately sad that he lost in front of his daughter and Luke Harper's son, Brody. Cody Rhodes really came out to the ring and kissed his daughter, even giving Brody his weight belt before the match, and similar to Johnson's entrance from the first night, I really thought this was a wrap for Roman Reigns and his title reign. That wasn't the case. Roman Reigns doesn't care about them kids, but I do, and to me, it made me emotional thinking about those two kids having to watch him lose, especially with all the cheating. It was a weird feeling I haven't got in a long time. While many people are frustrated with this booking decision, I understand it. Even though I wanted nothing more than Cody to win this match, I get it from WWE's perspective. A Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns feud is the hottest thing in the business right now. They are the two top stars in the industry. WWE wants more television programming from these two. A couple of months is not enough time. And from a creative storytelling aspect, this was never going to be the end. It was always going to be the beginning of the ending. And every possible story of all time, whether that's films, TV, books, or anything, the hero usually always fails and faces problems. Because every hero needs to fail, I completely understand the decision to make him lose. It's a deflating loss, but I'm more than ready now to see the rest of this journey. In fact, this loss can lead to a lot of great stuff. This is exactly how WWE should book the world title scene for the next year. Step one, Randy Orton returns tonight to help Cody Rhodes with the bloodline for the next few months. Step two, Cody Rhodes defeats Roman Reigns only for the WWE Championship at SummerSlam. Step three, Randy Orton turns on Cody Rhodes and they feud into WrestleMania 40 for that title. And we even see Team Rhodes versus Team Orton at Survivor Series in War Games. Anyways, Randy and Cody battle for the WWE title in one of the main events at WrestleMania 40. Step four, the bloodline implodes. Jey Uso defeats Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 40 for the Universal Championship. Step five, Solo Sokoa does not help Roman cheat to win that match and beat Jey Uso because he chooses his brother over the Tribal Chief and those two then get involved in a feud where Solo beats Roman. If WWE books the bloodline, Cody Rhodes, and the World Championships like this, then this Cody loss would have been worth it. So we're gonna have to wait and see what does happen, but I think that would be pretty fire. Drew McIntyre, Sheamus, and Gunther put on a banger of a match for the IC Championship. I love how everybody expected this classic match to be absolutely brutal and hard hitting, and that's exactly what we got. These men understood the assignments. Michael Cole, Corey Graves, and Titus O'Neil were literally marking out on commentary just like all of us. In the end, Gunther retained and looked like a million bucks. This man is ready for a world championship, and this match proved it. He was capable of delivering at the grandest stage of them all. The Demon returned last night to face Edge inside Hell in a Cell. It was also exactly what you expected. A brutal fight between two people who hated each other. And if you need any more proof of that, just look up Finn Balor's injury when Edge threw a ladder at his head. My guy's head was split wide open. What's even crazier is that Balor wanted to keep wrestling, but the doctors wouldn't allow him. And, and thankfully they didn't because it looked bad. He was treated immediately and received some numbing gel with staples. Finn Balor finished the match, taking spots off ladders and even jumping onto tables. To end it though, Edge struck him with a concerto. It was a fitting way to end this match. And while some people didn't love it, I thought it was very good. The funniest and most bizarre thing happened at WrestleMania. Shane McMahon, of all people, returned to have an impromptu match with The Miz. However, he blew out his knee after a leapfrog, 
and it was confirmed that he tore his quad. This is literally shades of the Royal Rumble in 2005 when Vince McMahon tore his quad getting inside the ring. Those McMahon quads are weak. Snoop Dogg then improvised and knocked out The Miz and hit him with the world's greatest finisher, the Snoop's elbow. Seeing the man run the ropes truly made my night. This alone might be a top 10 WrestleMania moment of all time. But I will say I was confused why WWE didn't just send out LA Knight to job out The Miz. He wasn't even on the show and that would have been the perfect opportunity and the dude is so over it would have been the right decision and I'm sure he would have not busted his ass in just seconds of the match starting. So that was an odd decision and I still think he should have been on the show. WWE does take an L for not having LA Knight at WrestleMania in LA. WrestleMania 39 Night 2 kicked off with the Beast Brock Lesnar taking on the Giant Omos. And this is a match that some people didn't want to see at all, while others thought it had potential. I was one of those guys who thought it had potential, and that's because Omos versus Bobby Lashley was fun last year, and I really also enjoyed Omos versus Braun Strowman at Crown Jewel. However, this wasn't great. I feel like it ended way too quickly. Just when things felt like they were going to turn up a notch, it just ended. Brock Lesnar and Omos barely wrestled. The match was under five minutes. It should have gotten another five minutes if you ask me. I was honestly disappointed. What made things even worse was that Bobby Lashley didn't even get a match at the show. WWE should have saved Lashley versus Lesnar 3 for WrestleMania. I still don't get the point of the finish at Elimination Chamber. This was a big L for Omos. This was a big L for Brock Lesnar. And this was a big L for Bobby Lashley. The women's showcase match wasn't good. I thought it definitely killed the momentum in the stadium. The audience just lost all their energy during this match. And you could even see WWE was protecting Ronda Rousey because of her injury. She just got in the ring at the very last second and won the match. This was there to just be there. WWE could have done without it. Heck, honestly, if you really wanted an extra match, Ziggler versus Ali should have taken the spot. I think those two men would have truly delivered in that ring. The last match I need to talk about is the Raw Women's Championship bout between Bianca Belair and Asuka. The match was pretty good. It wasn't as good as a SmackDown title match with Rhea Ripley and Charlotte, but despite that, I still think it was good. I just didn't care about the storyline at all, and because of that, I just wasn't interested or invested in this match. I will say though that I want to make a quick shout out to one of the dancers in Bianca's entrance. The mother of the contortionist passed away yesterday in the morning before WrestleMania. That is the little girl who did dance with Bianca Belair. Amina still came out to perform the entrance and I think for that she is very strong and brave and she earned my respect. My condolences do go out to her and her family. Anyways, that is it for WrestleMania 39 Night 2 and all my thoughts on the show. I thought it wasn't as great as the first night, however, it was still pretty good, but I don't think this is a top five WrestleMania of all time. It's still a really fun WrestleMania, but this definitely was a little bit more disappointing than the first night. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you all in the next video.